What's, what's it about the NDC that you love? Everything. I mean, no discrimination. We are all one. We love our people. If you are doing well and they think you can help do something, they push you. Hi, good day and welcome to another edition of The Lowdown here on Ghana Web TV. My name is Daniel Ojo. Today, my guest is a man who wears many hats. He's different things to different people. Sometimes he's a businessman, sometimes he's a sports administrator, and to others, he's a politician. Recently, he made a bid to lead the National Democratic Party, Congress Party, as its flag bearer. And while that did not go uh, the way he envisaged, we would have uh, a conversation about his general life as a politician and a civil servant of many, many years. He's done some incredible things in his life, uh, and we are going to have a, a delve into it and explore his life a bit more. Today, my guest is Mr. Kojo Bones, who is former mayor of Kumasi, which he prides himself very much for. He's also a former uh, director of the National Sports Authority, He's a uh, one-time uh, aspiring president of the Ghana Football Association. He's also managed Goyle in the past. He's worked for Adidas in the past. So, as you know, he's a man of many parts. Sir, good day and welcome to the show. Good day. Did, I get, did I get some of your accomplishments right? Yes. Most of them. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Um, have, how have you been the last couple of weeks? It's been only a few weeks since uh, the NDC Congress where you were aspiring to be the flag bearer of the party. Um, as we all know, that didn't go the, the way you envisaged. But have you overcome the disappointment? Have you moved on? Oh, yes, definitely. I've moved on. I was just resting. Okay. Because to be in the nooks and cranny of this country, we did 18,000 kilometers and it's a lot. Wow. So after that, I needed, I wanted to rest. Okay. And I've had enough rest. Thank you. So you mentioned um, covering this country over 18,000 kilometers. Were there things that were different from when you were growing up? I, I read that you grew up uh, partly in Kumasi and also went to school in Tamale. So that is right. Were there things that are different? Have things gotten worse than when you were growing up? Um, yeah, I mean, I thought things would have changed. I used to go to areas like Chiriponi. Sapsuku Tatali, um, Bom Purugu Yongyo, mm. and all those places. In the morning, you see kids not rushing for the rush hour school, you know. It's a percentage of them that will do the rush hour school thing. The rest, about 10 o'clock, that you see that people must be in school. You see yeah. them walking, loitering about, or following cattle, and, you know, doing other things. That is what really touched my heart, okay. because... I believe that at, this, at that age, you know, age between 12 and 10, it should be serious school age. Okay. You see them walking about. That is what really touched my heart because I believe that we should be doing something about it. Okay. Is, is, it, is it something that reinforced all the things that you saw that touched your heart? Did it reinforce your decision to want to be a flag bearer and to be a change agent uh, as a politician? Definitely. Something touched my heart. And there are a lot of things that Ghana is supposed to have done up to this point that we haven't done. Right. So that is what encouraged me to become a changed um, person okay. for the system. Okay. If you go to Rwanda, things are different. People always mention Rwanda. Yeah, because it's Africa. Okay. So you can't compare Ghana to Germany or France. Okay. All you have to do is do an African comparison. Okay. And it's Rwanda. Okay. Things are different there. And I think it's, it's a model that we can always pick here. And it's doable that it can be done. Okay. Only that we are not enforcing it. Many say our democracy and our politicians have failed us. I mean, your party's been in power before. There's been other parties. Is it a collective failure as a country? Let's, let's not talk about failure. Okay. It is, I call it indiscipline. Okay. It is total indiscipline that is in this country that we haven't enforced certain things. I mean, let me give you an example. We drive on the right, right, or yeah. on the left. 
uh, on the on the right. Okay, yeah. everybody is supposed to be driving on the right. You see motor bicycles. Instead of moving with you to the right direction, they face you. Okay. So they go to the opposite direction, and that is I see that as totally indiscipline. Okay. Because if you kill somebody, you have killed somebody. The law, you face the law. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that people don't even think that if you do that and you kill the person, it has be, it is fault. Okay. Nobody's looking at that. On a dual carriage road, on the right side and the left side, all cars, motorbike, motorbikes, everything moving should be on the right side moving. And on the left side coming, everybody should be. Here. But you see that where you are going, somebody is coming to face you, a motorbike. Yeah. Yeah. I see that as total indiscipline in the system. Okay. So the police is supposed to enforce that. So in this it's case, it's not the police, it's the, the government. The government is supposed to enforce it through okay. the, 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 the agencies like police. The people who don't know that is, even, that is even wrong or illegal. That is the thing. Okay. So it, br it brings about the indiscipline in the system. Okay. That is why I would love a situation where every student that is leaving school that is finished university or SS would do a two year national service with the military okay. for discipline. Two years. Two years. Not even one year. No one. No, normally they do one year now. Yes. Two years would do. Th that conversation has it's not the first time I'm hearing this. I mean people have people have mentioned that in the past. But there there are there are the other people on the other side who say even the military, which used to be the yastic of discipline has lost that, that, you know, reverence that we had for the military. They haven't, they haven't really lost it. I mean, it's the kind of training they give to the people. As for the training they have it. But you have so many bad nuts that have gone in there, but I don't think they've lost it. Okay. We can, we can revive it like the way the British do the Sunhurst training. Okay. That is what I believe that should be done in this country. So in the future, if you were to be president, that's something that you will enforce? It's part of my manifesto. Wow. Every student, you, whether you're going to do law, you're going to, be a, you're going to do medicine, you're going to be an accountant, your first two years before you get a certificate to go and do law, to go and do medicine, you have to come through the military training for two years as a national service. You think that is going to reset our discipline and, and, and everything? It's, it's not going to do it 100%, but at least it's going to bring us closer to people changing their lifestyles. Okay. Go to the ministry. People are supposed to start work at 8 o'clock. 11 o'clock, a uh, scheduled officer is not in yet. When he gets to the office, what is coming to the door? Like, not me, mommy, Harry. <laughs> not my sister, Harry, into the local hospital. I mean, it's not an excuse. Okay. But do so, we necessarily need the, the military training to do that? Like you said, it's discipline. It's, 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 it's somebody who... You see, the reason why I'm saying military training, at least you pick the sense of it. Okay. You pick the idea that people need to, to understand certain things. And that kind of military rigor training will push you into that system. Okay. So you come to understand how we do the things right. Okay. Let's backtrack a bit and, and, and go into your upbringing. Um, you born in Kuma, Yana Ashanti, born in Kumasi, raised in Kumasi, and then went to secondary school in Tamale. How did that happen? What, what was your childhood like? Are you born with a silver spoon in your mouth? Yes, come from I a was born family? with a silver spoon in my mouth. Oh, really? I lived at the presidency. Oh, really? In Kumasi, yeah, the Flagstaff house. Okay. Luckily, my mother, my senior sister, at that time hadn't had a baby yet. So I was giving to her to live. And the husband was the director of protocol to Kwame Nkrumah. All right. So I lived in the Flagstaff house, bungalow number four. I'm sure if you follow Ghana history, that bungalow number four is where they did the Kankanyami. Oh. So I've lived there, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I lived a very luxurious life in a presidential way. Wow. Yeah. You know, people, people like you, they say you've not struggled, so sometimes you can't identify with the ordinary but people. I have struggled called? a lot. Have you? Life. If, if life. you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. It doesn't matter. Life 
it's it's a long term. Okay. Okay. Breaks a point. Okay. When my father passed on, fine, my sister and the husband were still in top positions and I really enjoyed that. But at a point in life when I needed the most it was like they were not there and I had to start suffering, working hard. My mother died at an age that I had finished, just finished my O levels. And I used to travel worldwide with my mom. Okay. And um, suddenly I'd lost it. So life. Was it a rude awakening? Yeah. It was a rude awakening. Awakening. So it's like a reverse. Okay. Into coming through a hard life. When you but say I, hard I really, life. I really enjoyed hard life, fending for myself. Okay. Making sure that everything is done very well for myself. This was around what age? It was around. 1921. Oh, so you're uh, 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 almost uh, an adult. At 18, 19, I yes, mean. Yes, in Ghana, 18, 19 is not an adult. <laughs> right. I mean, on paper. Yes, you can vote, so we, we, we describe you as yes, an, adult. an adult. Yes, but hey, some of them, you need to look after them, make sure that they you know, do yeah. everything under the roof of the parents. Okay. Yeah. So then you moved to Tamale for your secondary education. Yes. I mean, for somebody who lived luxurious in Kumasi, first option would be to go to Prempe or to go to Pokuare and all of that. How, my, how did my, you end up in My mother Tamale? didn't like that because she didn't want me to be seen coming home all the time. Oh, okay. So they didn't so, send you away. <laughs> so she, she said, look, let me take... They have friends in Tamale, lawyer Diaka, um, Abukari Sumani, the former vice president, Aliu. Oh, really? But yes. I, I, so I stayed in their house when I was in Tamale. Like, I was in boarding house, but I go there for the weekends to go eat, go and have some lunch. Wow. So, so that was it. I mean, I enjoyed my life in Tamale, my term in Tamale, and it was interesting. Very, very interesting. Many say it's one of the, I mean, cleaners in, in the country. I mean, you talk about the Volta region, talk about the Northern region. I mean, they are more orderly than the chaos in Accra and Kumasi. If you talk about cleaners, I'm talking about field. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes, I think that is better. It is better, cleaner. Okay. So then you moved to the United Kingdom? Yeah, I moved to the UK. Okay. To go and start hustling for life. In <laughs> fact, my main intention, the main intention of going back to UK was to go to school. Okay. Well, hey, I had to run away from it. So when you went to the UK, you didn't go to school immediately? No, no, no. I went to the UK in June, which was the summer was holidays. Okay. And in um, what do you call it? In September, school had was reopening. Yeah. So I got a job immediately. I got into the UK, got a job with a company called William Shaw. People pronounce this call. Mm. I worked with them. At that time, I was, I was earning about 75 pounds and more. Really? Yes. A week. So quite interesting. So I put up with my brother and I had to run and find my own flat. So, so I was paying for it. So I was like controlling myself. I was a big man, which my, my, my sister and the husband were not very happy about. Why were uh, they not happy? Because they didn't no, think you, they, you were old enough to, to be school, independent? They had looked for a school for me to go. And you were, you were not doing as, as they expected I at that time? I didn't go. I was not going. Okay. But school reopened on the 16th of September. I never showed up. Because I was earning good money. Okay. But at some point, you went back to school? I didn't. You I never? made so much, but I didn't. Wow. I didn't. But so you see, the, the good thing is about my life is I've done a lot of courses, diploma courses, management training. So that is why I've gotten so much experience. Okay. You know. But is a path you're not going to let your children take if, if they said, okay, I'm making money, but I don't want to go to school? I wouldn't, I wouldn't allow them to do that. But yeah. hey, my parents were not alive to, to push it. Yeah. You know, so that was the disadvantage I had. Okay. You're still on the lowdown here on Ghana Web TV. My name is Daniel Odro. Today, my guest is Mr. Kojo Bonsu. Um, I'm sure you do know him as the former mayor of Kum uh, Kumasi, 
uh, former boss of the National Sports Council. He rebranded it to the National Sports Authority. We'll go into that. He also served on the board of Goyle and later became its managing uh, director. Um, credited for, if you like, revolutionizing Goyle. He also worked with Adidas and we were talking to, about that. He also, at some point, was a sports person, wanted to become the president of the Ghana Football Association and recently wanted to be the flag bearer of the National Democratic Congress. As elections approach, we'll discuss what the party is doing to recapture power uh, ahead of the next general election. We'll go for our first break. When we return, we'll delve more into the life of Mr. Kojobon. So stay with us. We're back after this break. Everyone needs the perfect snack to munch on during a fun moment. Wow. Enjoy the tasty McBerry Twist Cupcakes, wow. deliciously baked and packaged for a sweet treat. Mm. Premium quality cakes, baked with love for all, enriched in butter and milk. Mm, yummy. Oh, McBerry Twist Cupcakes. Simply irresistible. Try one today. This advert is FDA approved. Welcome back from the break. This is still the lowdown on Ghana Web TV. Today we're having a conversation um, with Mr. Kojo Bonsu. Um, and he's, you know, revealing some interesting facts about his life as a hustler in the UK. As a boy who was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, but you know, as they say, life is, is a journey, a bit of ups and downs. And he had his fair share of both the ups and the downs. Mr. Bonsu, I mean, you've, you've accomplished so much in your life as a, as a Ghanaian citizen. You've worked at God, you've worked at the National Sports Council, later became the National Sports Authority. I mean, you've worked at Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly. Where, which, which is one of the things you, you, you are really proud of because when I went to your, onto your Twitter uh, page, that's, that's a description there, former mayor of, of Kumasi. Is it the job that you enjoy the most? Um, it's the challenges and the experience I had. Okay. That's what I really enjoy. You're a Kumasi boy, so you must have, when, when you got that appointment, you might, you might have you see, looked at yes, it and said, I Kumasi want to change. Kumasi boy, but you see, Asante, I was... Born and bred there. Yeah. And it's for my grandparents. Right. So if I'm working for Kumasi or Asante, mm -hmm. I see it as doing something for my family. So I dedicate and put up my all in it. Right. So that is how it is. So I wouldn't want to pride myself on Asante Niba or something, but the pride of being an Asante and also the pride of my grandparents who were born on the golden stool. Okay. So that prides me okay. becoming a worker or but a server. You credited with the Ratri Park, um, which, which was the first of its kind in Kumasi. But in you, Ghana? In Ghana. Uh, do you know its state now? Do you know if it's still functional? Oh, it's functioning. It's functioning. But hey, I, I, I don't go into it because I've left it. I've finished and I've washed my hands out of it. So. I'm not part of that anymore. Your time at the KMA was not without challenges. Do you look back and realize some of the things you could have done better? If, if, if you say challenges, yes. But it also it helped me a lot for me to understand the people that I serve. Okay. So I serve them very well. Okay. And I see the challenges are normal, that you would go through that. If you don't go through challenges, you go through very smooth. That means you wouldn't perform very well. Okay. And I pride myself of being one of the best mayors Kumasi have ever had. Okay. On the benefit of hindsight, other things you'd have done differently, or you have done the same thing. I would have done the same thing even more harder. Okay. Because you want a better city, and mayors make sure that cities are run very well, and that is all I was looking at. Okay. For a better Kumasi. The Kumasi today, uh, many say it's not the the um, if you like, the garden city that it ought to be or used to be. Are you, your vision of Kumasi when you became KMA boss, do you see, you see that path now? Do you, do you, are you disappointed that it, it has not followed that, that path? Um, disappointment, yes. I'm very disappointed. But the thing is that 
You cannot be there forever, and the place is not yours. Every four years, a law in this country is that we have to change the const I mean, constitution says that four years every new system must happen. Yeah. If you continue, that means you win. The maximum will be eight years. Yeah. So my mind was that I wasn't going to stay there for a long, a long time. The work and somebody would come and take over. Okay. Also, the thing is that if you left memoirs, if you left, I mean, reports for them to follow and they didn't, you can't do anything about it. Okay. All that you do is you pray that they follow the reports you left so that everything can be uh, good for the city. Have people consulted you to ask of your experience there, like those who have succeeded you? Um, nobody has said no. We don't do that in this country. We don't, I mean, you've served in that capacity, you know, you, you have some. I was doing it because I was consulting an Akosi Ajiman. Okay. May he so rest in peace. He's passed on. I was consulting him and also I was consulting Mr. James, also, he's also passed on, having a chat with them about Kumasi and how to do things. Yeah. So I believe that um, it should be done. If you consult and listen to the person, then you better yourself okay. so that you can handle challenges okay. more than not consulting. Okay. Let, let's go back to your time in the UK. When you arrived in the UK, were there, was there a cultural shock? Were there things that you saw that you said, why is this different here? And it is no, I'd, I'd been to UK many times before okay. I went to the so Okay, but the first was, time you went to the UK, for example? I went to the UK when I was a very young boy, I think in 64. Okay. So, I mean, it wasn't different. Okay, so it was I like just, just was going, going back home? Not home, but I used to go there on holiday, and so okay. I knew what existed there. But even when you started growing up and started appreciating life, were there things that you saw that you said we could replicate this back home and life would be better for well, the, general, the general the general A lot of things could be replicated. I mean, how things are done. When you go and you see people buying things, they have to queue for it. They didn't jump the queue. Mm -hmm. These are all things that I saw. These are the discipline issues you talk about. Yes. They are all discipline issues. It is. Okay. You know, Ghana, some big man will come. Hey, you know, allow me. And it's not done. What the hell? You join the queue and buy it. Yeah. You know, and that is how a country must be. Okay. Uh, you cannot blame government, and government can push and enforce the laws, but the individual discipline must be there. Okay. Maybe then, you see, people say the discipline fester because the sanctions are not applied. People know they can get away with anything that they do. I mean, so that is the reason why. We have nice laws on our books, but we cannot enforce them. Sometimes for political expediency, sometimes because we know the law doesn't bite. It will bite with time. With, with time. Okay. Yes. Let's, let's talk about your bid to be flag bearer of the NDC, um, which was not the first time. You uh, made an attempt in... If I'm not mistaken, 2012? 2018. 2018. And then redrew from the race. But this time you won the full hall against a man who, during his tenure, gave you an appointment. Did you go in hoping to win or you want to, you want to be ahead of the queue just in case his tenure no, is no, done? No, no, no. I wanted to win. But the public spoke. The NDC okay. delegates spoke. They wanted it more than me. Okay. That is the difference. So it's not because you want to be top of the mind awareness at the next Congress. No, that's... You know, people say that's what you politicians do. Like, you know, this one will be difficult for me to win. But if I put in a bid, the next time I can go and say, because I lost this one, you have to consider me or my name recognition. I don't think so. Maybe. I don't think so. Is that what you think? That's fine. That's what many people think. Good. Does it mean the next, the next um, Congress you're going to... Um, be in the in the race again who knows all we need is long life good health okay so i can't sit down and predict now okay is it is it cost intensive to run very, a campaign very expensive so you've you've really pumped in a lot of money a lot, in this of, money. Campaign. A lot of money wow so you, this is usually traveling or this is um per dms you give to your team or, or what traveling per dms fuel hotels 
donation to the constituency and the branch that you visit. Okay. And oh. And this one you you foot from your personal finances. Personal and friends, and you know support. Okay. Help to do it. You're a very rich man, aren't you? Who? Who want to be poor? Nobody wants to be poor in this world. But I wouldn't say I'm a rich man. Okay. I'm in there. You're a, comf you're a comfortable man. I try. <laughs> I know you're trying to be modest then. And that's oh, it. not modest. I mean, if I'm rich, I'll say it. Okay. Why not? If I'm rich, I'll say it. I'm not a rich man, but I'm okay. Okay. All right. Let's, let's talk about the, the elections that are coming up. Do you think the NDC stands a very good chance of winning? 100%. We're all going to fight behind Mahama. We are going to do it. You don't believe it. You watch it. Watch me in Ashanti region. Mm. We are going to support the winner of our, our what you call, primaries. That is His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. I'm going to fight in my area. Which area is that? Ashanti. Okay. For us to get the votes for us to win power. They say even in Ashanti, you guys are not united. As I say, is a typical example. Muntaka said the party wanted to oust him you, and all of that. You let them say whatever we want. When the time gets there, you will see. You're confident that you can win? Oh, we, we will win. You we will mess up in this system. Mm -hmm. And this is poised to win. Do people look at you as somebody who is Ashanti born and bred, um, royal, and say, why are you with the NDC? I mean, typically people say... I've had that experience many times. Years back, I was even told, ah, no, this shepa, and na, we do a bone crop for you. But that is where I belong. That is where I love. I don't do things because a friend or a brother. Most of my family are all NPP, but I choose to be NDC, and I love it there. What's, what's it about the NDC that you love? Everything. I mean, no discrimination. We are all one. We love our people. If you are doing well and they think you can help do something, they push you. Mm. So that would make me love NDC. And you think that's different with the other party? I, I'm not there, but I don't want to be there. You don't want to be there? Okay. Did you make any compromises, um, like cut a deal before the Congress? Did you cut a deal? Cut a deal with who? I mean, those who are ahead of the queue. Those who are... Um, have How many people are ahead of the queue? I'm asking a question. So you have a relationship with Mahama, don't you? Yes, I do. He's my former boss. So when, when he knows that you're contesting him, he's not disappointed? Why should, should he be? He wouldn't. I know him so well, he wouldn't. I mean, many thought you should give him a free ride. It saves everybody the cost of no, the Congress. No, democracy and is all that we want in our party. We want our party to be exciting. We want our party to be good. So that a lot of people would come in. The young ones come in and say, oh, that's for NDC there. If you know what you're about and you're good, you can become a leader or you can get a good position. Okay. So I, I don't think it's like that. But anyway, the primaries are over. Yes. Yeah. We're all one. We are united. We're going to fight. We're going to Asin. Asin, yes. Asin North to go and fight to win power. You were in Kumewu? I was. So even after all the tiredness, you, you had to strap up and go there and, and, and try and hope that Why you're not? going to win. You want your party to win? You want to sit down and sleep? No, no sleeping. <laughs> and we need to support our leader so that we can win power. Power is very important. Have you forgotten the saying President Kufo said, it's better to be um, yeah, yeah, yeah. a, 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 a labor, a, a, a messenger boy, boy. or a laborer in your government being in power yes, than yes. to go and become a secretary general in opposition. Yes, yes, that's so true. So it's very important. So why we have to fight to win power, and I'm going to fight for NDC to win power. Okay. Are you going to consider being a running mate to President Mama if he, if he offered? Oh, I mean, it's an interesting question. His Excellency John Dramani Mahama has the prerogative. And if he believes that Kojobozu can do it, why not? Okay. Because we are united and I'm going to give him my all to support him win. So okay. why, if he chooses me as his vice, bingo. And we're going to work in tandem to make everything work very well. If you're not running mates, which other portfolio would you like where you think you can make change? I wouldn't want to choose any portfolio. But you should have a place that you said, this place, I want to make a change there. No. Um, the party knows me. The 
party knows all I can do. Wherever they put me and they see that I have the expertise to do it, I would love to do it. Really? Yes. So KMA, former KMA boss, former NS, uh, National Sports Council to National Sports Authority, they say you like doing a lot of rebranding. Everywhere, when you went to Gore, you did that. When you went to NS, uh, the Sports Council, you did that. What's, what's the idea behind it? You see, it's, 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 there's no idea behind it, but you see, you have to refresh the memory of people. If you allow people to see the old thing, yeah. it doesn't progress, it doesn't do for them. Some companies in this world, like 2000s and the Elves and the international companies, every four years they do a facelift just to sell yourself for people to see all that you're doing so that it can bring even more customer or make the company. So better. that's why you do it. Yes, a I face believe that. Fresh, yeah, freshen up. Freshen up and get people to have new ideas to do things. So it's not just a change of name because the sports no, council becomes a sports authority. Yes, sports council, that was that one became a, an authority. authority. But the rest, Goyle was still Goyle. It's the face, the logo yeah. and, the, and, the, and the branding, that's all. You believe in a lot of branding. It's, it's, it's my expertise. Okay. Okay. That's what I know very well. Okay. Anyway, this is still the lowdown on Ghana Web TV. We're having a very interesting conversation with Mr. Kojo Bonsu, um, former KMA boss. Uh, he's, like I said, many people describe him in different uh, categories or ways because he's, he's a man of many parts. He's a businessman, an astute one at that, a sports administrator, a politician, and a philanthropist as well. Um, we're in the first part of our conversation here, and then we'll continue in part two, where we talk about the state of Ghana, the economy of Ghana, uh, businesses, because he's a businessman, the state of businesses in Ghana, in this current um, administration. So all this and more on part two of our conversation, our up close and personal conversation with Mr. Kojo Bonsu. This is still the lowdown with me, Daniel Ojo, on Ghana Web TV. Thank you.